Yeah, I've definitely been told to kill myself like probably like 700 times while playing games. So they proceeded to send me kill yourself n-word over 100 times. There was a pedophile online who I was playing with is actively grooming these people. People much younger than they should have been being on these and really just not knowing better. Like you're only playing Fortnite because mommy can't actually play a game with you. And they say like things that really target the kids. Because you can pull someone's IP when playing games with someone. Yeah, they asked for pictures, they tried to sext me, they wanted me to go to their country. A lot of them wouldn't leave me alone. A lot of them wanted me to be their virtual girlfriend. Welcome to a very special episode of Scrolling to Death. You may think you know what's happening in the world of online gaming, but I can assure you, you don't know the half of it. Over the past couple of months, I've had dozens of conversations with gamers. We talked about the good and the bad and everything in between. What has been revealed to me is a huge gap between parents and gamers, a gap in understanding and a gap in support. Parents like me, look, we grew up playing Mario Kart or Duck Hunt on our giant televisions in the living room. Kids' gaming experience nowadays is a world apart. They're playing online, they're playing with strangers, and in some cases, they're playing with predators. And in violent games, there's trash talk, of course, but there's also racial slurs and suicide baiting. And for some kids, it goes too far. As with any platform our children are spending their time on, it's our responsibility as parents to prepare them and to guide them and to support them through this experience. And how can we do that unless we know what they're facing? This episode will help parents prepare their kids for the world of gaming to play safely. But first, let's meet the gamers that were brave enough to share their experiences with me. A few of the gamers chose to be anonymous, so you won't hear their names mentioned here, but you'll hear their voices and their stories later in the episode. My name is Samuel Paredes. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. My first memory is having a controller in my hand. I was sitting on my dad's lap and we were playing Halo. That was my first memory, actually. I'm Kyle Rainey. I was uh, born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. Everybody in my household, like all my like my uncles and my older brother, they all play games and stuff. So I'd say bro, from like maybe four years old. So my name is Preston. I'm from California, but I'm currently living in Idaho for college. I'd started with like an Xbox 360 probably when I was nine years old. All my siblings would play, so I've been playing for a really long time. My name is Ra and I'm originally from Latvia. I started playing World of Warcraft, so like 12 or 13. Uh, my name is Edgar Sandoval and I'm from Houston, Texas. <laughs> I started out whenever I was little, I was six. I'm John, I'm from California originally. Right now I'm going to college in North Dakota. I remember first getting my console around 2012, playing on the Xbox 360, then the Xbox One, and then now the current Xbox. My name's Yannick, I'm from Brisbane, Australia. I have gamed probably since uh, I was about maybe 10. My name's James, I live in Canada. Probably like five or six, I started playing on PS2 with my brother. I've basically been playing most of my life. My name is Faye, I'm from the US, but culturally I'm from Cuba, so I come from immigrant parents. I think I started at around nine, playing a game called Our World. My name is Brandon Lester, I'm from a small town in eastern Kentucky, pretty much middle of nowhere. My first real solid memory of it was, I believe, four years old. My mother handed me her phone and showed me Tetris for the first time, and that just clicked with me. My name is uh, Christian Garcia. I live in Houston, Texas. I started gaming around the age of five. My dad had won a Xbox 360 at a casino as a prize, and he gave it to me, to me and my brother, and we just been playing ever since. Whenever I told my family about this interview beforehand, they said, have you ever been cyberbullied? And I told them straight up, I told them, yes, I have. And they asked me for examples, and I told them, oh, I've been told to kill myself. I've been told that I'm trash. And the slurs that I would hear were constant. So Chris mentions slurs, and we're going to get into that now. 
the biggest difference between gaming for Gen X and elder millennials and gaming now is that gamers can play with anyone in the world, which is pretty cool. And while they game, they talk out loud and in text. We can all probably handle a little trash talk, but what our kids are hearing and saying on these gaming chats, it goes a little further. I mean, sometimes it goes a lot further. There's times where whenever I was little, I'd be playing just how I normally play and I'd get a loud noise in my ear, some guy yelling at me like, oh, you suck, get off the game. And, and sometimes it was bad where they would like say, kill yourself and stuff like that. Yeah, I've definitely been told to kill myself like probably like 700 times while playing games. Those are adults talking to you. And as a child, you hear like kill yourself a hundred times. And you're like, damn, that's pretty heavy. So they proceeded to send me kill yourself n-word over 100 times and then at the bottom they started saying different slurs for different races and then kill yourself you're fat and then more slurs my friend likes to say go kill yourself i'm like dude you can't be saying that stuff because it's messed up he claims he's joking but it's all fun and games till that does happen you can say kill yourself and you saying that doesn't have any sort of punch because it's used so often hearing it and like just being a perpetrator of it, like, yeah, it happens every day for sure. <laughs> I think if people heard that you, you had gone and killed yourself after they had said that, they, they would not be feeling good. So you're hearing that right. Gamers are telling each other to go kill yourself in online games. A lot. So much so that, like Preston said, it doesn't have any sort of punch anymore. And when one person tells another person to go kill themselves in a game, they can't really mean it, right? And I wondered, what do they really mean? So when someone says go kill yourself in the game, what do, you, what do they mean really? That you're so bad, you should never play a game ever again. No one actually hopes you kill yourself. They just say it because they want you to know that they're mad. It wasn't even meant in a serious kill yourself. You're a waste of space kind of manner. It's just jokes among friends. I know, oh, if they tell me to kill myself, that's more of an indication of what's wrong with them. I feel like a lot of people when it comes to gaming are very, very, very ignorant. Um, and gaming itself is a toxic culture. In comments like of one of the guy's videos, like he literally said, oh, whenever I was a little kid, I got told to kill myself. And the, one of the first comments was like, oh, you must have been bad. He was like eight. Of course he was bad. <laughs> Yeah, we are a bunch of assholes, but we're not evil people. One of their attentions is to get attention. They want the likes, they want that neural feedback, and they're willing to sacrifice their beliefs to make it happen, or their parents' beliefs, or their society's beliefs on empathy to receive that feeling. Is it normal to say kill yourself over a game chat? Yeah, maybe, but only under the presumption that people aren't actually going to do it. I, I don't think there's a lot of actually malicious intent behind it. However, it, it is something that you know, definitely will go sideways once in a minute because there's always a chance. Like, when you say something like that, you are operating under the assumption that you know 99.999% of the time they're just going to brush it off. You know, but that 0.1% obviously happens. It does happen. It does go too far. Just this past December, a 15-year-old boy in Michigan was being told to kill himself while gaming. And he did it. He shot himself while logged into the gaming server. There are vulnerable people who are dealing with things in their lives, and when prompted again and again, they will take that next step. And apparently, in the case of this Michigan boy, and in many other cases that I've learned about, gamers are relentless. Some will target another gamer and do whatever they can to break them. What I'm going to share next may disturb you. Because what we don't know, and what we should know, is that there are people in games who take it too far. And there are predators. There's predators, there's just inappropriate content. Those people with those really poor behaviors will, will seek out things like Roblox, which are which is, you know, for children just so they could be where the children are. Sometimes when people get a hold of that stuff, when they're too young, they're too naive, they don't know better, people with bad intentions will find them. 
I saw like how adults treated, you know, like children like myself. And I was like, I don't want that. I want them to treat me, you know, like a person. So I lied about my age. I said I was 21. <laughs> That got me a lot of attention. Yeah, a lot of people were hitting on me. They were just talking me, you know, just like average woman experience. But eventually, they did find out that I was lying about my age. Some people did not like it. A lot of people actually gave me even more attention. And if before it was just, you know, hitting on me, casual flirting, then after that it turned into sexual stuff. Yeah, they asked for pictures, they tried to sext me, they wanted me to go to their country, they wanted to come here. They started to stalk my uh, social medias. A lot of them wouldn't leave me alone. A lot of them wanted me to be their virtual girlfriend. There was a pedophile online who I was playing with. Not just on the gaming chat, he was actively grooming these people people much younger than they should have been being on these and really just not knowing better. He took advantage of the situation and it was horrible. I used to run a server with a bunch of players and I had to shut it down because one, I kept receiving dick pics and two, I had a stalker. They knew everything about me. At that same time, my old Instagram was getting hacked repeatedly. At that same time, my Snapchat was also bugging out where I couldn't receive messages from anyone. So it's very weird that the timing was all around that stalker. So I had to delete the server, delete my Instagram, remake it, delete my Snapchat. It doesn't matter if you're good, bad, black, white, man or female. No matter what, you're gonna get people talking bad about you. My name has always been BLAXK, as in black, and from N words to hard R's to go kill yourself to homophobic slurs, like every slur imaginable. My previous Xbox account used to be called Raging Mexican, and that gave people away what my ethnicity was, and the slurs that I would hear were constant. A lot of people today will hate on younger people, not just because there's nothing to do with skill or even the game, right? They're just like, oh, you're only playing this because your parents don't care about you. Like, you're only playing Fortnite because mommy can't actually play a game with you. And they say, like, things that really target the kids because, like, they're just trying to one-up it from their experience. His name was Reaper, and he was, like, so, so bad. He would DDoS people. DDoSing is whenever you show their address and you turn their internet off. And sometimes you can even fry someone's router off of that. That's another thing you need to look out for when you're playing games, because you can pull someone's IP when playing games with someone. Okay, so there are real, true threats within gaming. And I was especially curious about how the female experience was while playing games. We know that most gamers are male, and I learned that if you are not a male, you are a target. And I'll get called things like pocket pussy, a fleshlight. Obviously, there's not a lot of women who play games. Some of those who do play, they feel extremely threatened by other women as well, so they try to get all the attention to them. I've had girls who hated me just because I existed. Female players are almost more toxic because it's seen as a competition rather than an alliance, right? So you'll see another female player, and if they're doing just a smidge worse than you, you instantly go on the defensive because, oh, I can make them the target and not me. I think it comes to a rarity of genders other than male being in the gaming scene. So first off, you know, women in general, are, I'm just going to generalize it to women, but women are pretty rare when it comes to playing online games. And then you've got the majority of your player base being like men who are probably in or not far out of puberty. You've got this cataclysmic joining of events where you've got like anonymity, disinhibition, women who are not usually in this space and men who are teenagers, immature. Although, you know, I've probably seen it with adult men, unfortunately. It's horrible, right? Horrible things are said, inappropriate things. In general, I would say it would be an unpleasant experience to be a, a woman in gaming. 
Gaming is always a toxic experience. It's interesting to note that um, if you grew up with it, it doesn't seem that toxic to you. It just seems kind of the way it is. It's just toxic. It's just the way it is. Is it toxic people within the games or is it the games itself? What was clear is that there are bad people in the gaming chats and the games, people who want to do bad things to take advantage of young kids, minorities, women. But these gamers I talked to were not bad people. As you can hear, they are kind and eloquent and cool. I'd want to be friends with them. Maybe I got lucky with a dozen or so that I talked to, but something tells me that these gamers are pretty good at turning it on and off. I wonder, does the violence or the bullying within the gaming chats, does it affect their mental health? Does the toxicity weigh on them? Does it reach them at all? You don't know how far someone already is through their personal life, because I've had issues with harming myself, and just saying one little thing may be the end of it, and just push you over the tip. And I've had a lot of people in game say, honestly, if I lose this game, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna kill myself because I can't take it anymore. Words hurt, you know. You don't even know what someone's going through. There's some people that can be really happy on mic, and but in reality, their life sucks and they are in a dark place. Just kind of getting exposed to negative things can uh, definitely impact, you know, a young person's ability to process it later on. If all they're playing is this one comfort game and like they're so fixated on it and they had a really shit day and somebody does something like that to them, oh totally it's gonna mess them up. But like that that that's also like the kid shouldn't be playing the game. Like the, the kid the kid should have healthy facets to explore outside of this digital verse because you're putting the onus of raising like a child and their their entire like worldview and responsibility on something as like fragile as a word over the internet, which is like really not how you should operate through life. I remember at 13, there was a time I was thinking about killing myself. Words people were saying to me were bothering me and took me to a dark place, and I had thought about killing myself. And I was gonna do it, but um, last minute decided not to. Every once in a while, that they will come back to me. Well, don't ever do that, James. You have people to talk to. You know, you can reach out to me. Anything. Like, don't ever. Okay, we can see that it's affecting them. Just like any other online platform, social media, gaming, when used too much, it can negatively affect your mental health, especially when gamers don't have valuable relationships outside of the game. But how do gamers find a balance? Games are created to be addictive, to get the gamer to play every day for as many hours as possible. Are gamers able to keep a healthy balance between a gaming habit and things like in-person friendships, sports, school? family relationships. I have heard from a lot of people that this game is like heroin, except you don't get the highs of heroin. You just get the lows constantly until that one time that it hits. I played 17 hours in a row once, and then I realized, oh, I haven't eaten, I haven't drank water all day. I should probably, you know, take a break. My GPA went from a 4.2 to a 2.9 in the span of me picking up this game. There is a game that I used to play 100% of my day, have over 400 hours into the game. The addictiveness of the games is worrisome for young teens and adolescents. Their brain is still developing, and as a group, they struggle with managing their tasks and their priorities. Games don't make this any easier. And while gamers may not always be succeeding at the balance, they really are pretty talented people. They have to become masters at flipping a switch. They can log into a game, act like a total heathen, say things you would never say in real life. Then they turn the game off and for the most part, act like a polite human being. So I wondered, what makes it okay for people, good people, to say horrible things in a game? It's like a veil of ego that you can have on the internet that uh, of the younger generation, is uh, really consumed with, man. It's like, it, it's startling. I think anonymity online is a wonderful thing in, in terms of flying authority. However, it, it will cause people, especially younger people, to say things that are, are definitely inappropriate or harmful. Sure. In real life, they're a whole different person. 
they just don't have the guts to say these things to somebody in their face. That's also one reason why I never take these things seriously. Because he can't do it in real life, so I, he has to do it somewhere, I guess, to blow some steam off. <laughs> For the internet, they have that security that they can sit behind the screen. They can say whatever, and the person that they're saying it to won't, like, you know, give the time of day to try to track them down or anything like that. A lot of people that say it are obviously saying it because they have hate in their own self. You know what I mean? If you kill someone, right, and they they lost, they're gonna try making you feel the same way. So the anonymity that exists, the ability to use an avatar and a fake name, paired with a violent activity. It opens the door to saying whatever the hell you want, with no consequences. So if gaming can be toxic and addictive, create mental health issues and real life issues for these gamers, why do they do it? One thing is for sure, gamers love gaming. There are over 3 billion people who play online games worldwide. That's nearly half of all the people that exist. So there's got to be some upsides, right? I've made a lot of friends, actually. Uh, some people that I still talk to to this day. Um, just the other day, some um, kid that I remember, I was 15 and he was like 8 at the time, is now 15 now, and he just talking to me about life. You'll meet a lot of interesting people from all over the world. It's a good way to connect with people, especially locally and around the world. I know some amazing friends of mine who are over in Singapore, Taiwan, Korea, Japan got a couple friends over in Africa and without these apps I wouldn't have been able to meet these amazing people who have made a major impact on my life. Not all game chat is just people cursing each other out like you can have lots of wholesome experiences with really nice people you know like that's how I met my friend group is through game chat and meeting some really just genuine nice people. I learned how to get really, really good at the game to the point where I actually got uh, a contract to play for a semi-pro team whenever I was 15. They were going to pay me 20k for two years and I would play competitively and I would play in tournaments for money. I've definitely met a lot of nice people in games, which I still talk to, and as well my husband I met in a game. Yes, it's very toxic, but don't shy your kids away from that because that was a really good time in my childhood. Because, you know, sometimes whenever I was at home and I, I felt like I wasn't heard, for a long time I didn't really think that going to therapy was a manly thing to do. In a way, gaming can be your therapy. These gamers basically pled with me. Tell parents to not withhold gaming from your kids. They say some of their best memories happened while gaming. So if you, as a parent, decide to let your kid game, how can you keep it safe? to take advantage of the good things, like making friends all over the world, but to stay away from the predators. The experience of gaming isn't going to be wholesome and perfect, but there are things that parents and gamers can do to make it slightly safer. And who better to advise us than the people that spend their time in these games? First, as with anything we introduce to our kids, we need to keep it age appropriate. Make sure that they're not playing with randoms until like way older, until they understand. And then also obviously talk to them that the stuff they say isn't serious and there's a reason why they're saying it behind the screen and not to you. We don't really want minors in here because we have a lot of adult conversations, we've made jokes. You should definitely check the age ratings, for example, on games. Stuff like E for Everyone, keeping with single player games. You know, there's a whole market of games, which we call single player games you know, they can't go online. I think you should be, like, aware of what your kid is interested in. You know, like, if your kid wants to uh, explore something in real life, you should get them a game or some sort of media that just fulfills that outside of just, like, one path to explore. It should be, like, a multifaceted thing. So, like, if your kid wants to solve puzzles, you should get them, like, a simulation game, like a, like a car mechanic game. There's tons of those on Steam. But, like, small things like that just show them that, hey, like, a video game isn't just, like, oh, I'm gonna shoot people on the internet and swear at you. Like, you can learn, you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Like a Nintendo Switch, I'd say it's the, the safest console out there. That's mostly like where families come together. Like I have a Switch myself. Most of the time I'm playing downstairs with my family on Mario Kart or like Super Mario and stuff like that. The brilliant thing about games is that there are so many of them and in so many different genres and available both online and offline. So 
if you're really worried about stuff like that, I would encourage you to experiment with some offline games and just start there. For example, I'm sure you've heard of Minecraft, that can be played offline and in my opinion, introduced at the right age and in the right amount, Minecraft can be a really educational game. Now on to some advice on setting boundaries and time limits. Really the only thing to be worried about is getting them addicted, <laughs> which just comes with the moderation part and discipline. I mean, even now I still have issues with managing my time, but I have been able to thrive in what I have and what I've done so far. I'm at an okay spot. I was able to burst out of that on my own, and I feel like every kid's going to need to learn how to do that because it is with maturity and it is with growing up. Time management is a big thing as a young kid because I do feel like sometimes it like, rots a kid's brain when they're doing too much online stuff. Don't let them become too obsessed. You gotta really connect with your own kids. You gotta level with them. You gotta be there. Know what they're experiencing, knowing that these people online are real friends to people. They are humans that have their own feelings, individual emotion. It can make a massive improvement for some people. In an effort to do like really good parenting, parents can create, you know, a lot of boundaries. Just totally understandable, there should be boundaries. And oversight from the perspective of the kid sometimes, this can come across as a bit of a disconnect. Kids are not emotionally mature and they can rationalize the wrong reasons for why these boundaries are there. You know, they, they might feel less emotionally close with their parents because their parents are, you know, taking away things from them. But like, look, that's not to say like, let your kid like free reign, like do whatever. Um, there should be boundaries. And, you know, sometimes those boundaries come with like some negative effects and that's what we have to deal with. But what I would encourage um, just from like a empathetic perspective would be to always remain in open communication with your kid and, and like hear out their concerns um, and, and genuinely like hear them. Don't just like listen to it and then pretend to be empathetic. Now gamers share about the in-game tools and settings kids can use to block, to censor, or mute when necessary. Look at the settings of the games. Um, a lot of games you can censor almost everything like um, in COD the second you boot up the game it's would you like to have blood in this game would you like to turn off dismemberment or stuff like that that's in the game like even in GTA I believe there's a lot of censorships because like GTA is like a whole real life world thing and you can go into strip clubs and stuff there's an option where you can have the lobby muted before you can go into a game that's something that you want to use to just like not talk to anyone just use the the lobby it's a lobby mute button on the in the settings the block button is always an option, you can always just ignore it. Game developers have put so many options to like, to shut off game chat. Like Minecraft has text game chat. You join the Hypixel Minecraft server and you can see a bunch of people just chatting on the left side of your screen. But servers like that usually have, you know, they have profanity protection. Minecraft warns you before you go into the game saying, caution, there's game chat. You can turn it off the settings and so does like every other game in existence have an option to turn off game chat. And a few thoughts about sharing private information while gaming. Never sharing information about yourself ever. My parents obviously drilled that in my brain, but I feel like that's just so obvious. It should be obvious that if it's not, it's definitely the parent's responsibility to let your kid know, to never share where you live, who you're related to, stuff like this. Like just random information about yourself that someone, random guy online doesn't need to know about you. Not say any like addresses or give your phone number or email address or something like that. Or your socials. Finally, the gamers themselves are telling us parents we need to moderate what our kids are seeing and hearing while they're gaming. Just like with an iPad, we cannot use gaming as a babysitter. It's never a bad idea to say, know the password to your child's account so you can just go in and look at the group chats they're in, see who's saying what, finding out the age of certain people in there. You should definitely moderate what you're doing, not give them too much play time, you know, check what they are playing. For those first years, just be there to monitor them. Don't just let give them the game and let them, you know, do willy-nilly. Make sure that who they're talking to is okay, that they're not too, you know, crazy. 
if I were to ever get my kid in VR, like my little sister, for example, I'd always have my phone just watching to see what she's doing, you know what I mean? She'll think she's on her own, but like I'm just sitting there just watching on the little mirror screen because, bro, there's just a child. I wouldn't let her go to the park alone. I'm not letting her wear a VR headset to beam information behind her eyeballs. Like, it's crazy. If Kyle tells me it's crazy, it must be crazy. Okay, parents, that was a lot, and let's do a little review. First, choose a game that is suitable for your child's age, obviously. Safest options to start off with are games rated E for everyone, offline, single-player games like Minecraft, and using a Nintendo Switch. As a parent, get familiar with the settings around profanity. Turn off the game chat if they're playing online and you don't want them chatting with strangers. There's even filters around blood and gore. Play the game for an hour yourself on your own so you know what your child is experiencing before you hand it to them. Gamers are recommending that kids play offline until they're maybe 14 or 16 until you feel that they can handle the level of trash talk and predatory behavior that will come their way when they get online. Make sure they know how to block, mute, and to report other users. Teach them about privacy and to never share personal identifiers on a gaming chat. Even if they know the person in real life, someone else could be listening. Set time limits. This is obvious but really important for them to learn as they transition into a college or adult setting. Gamers who were forced to set boundaries while in their parents' home found it easier to set limits when they moved out on their own. Monitor their play. Have them play in a common area so you can hear what's going on, but also give them some wiggle room to express themselves. Even better, play with them. I could literally feel the nostalgia from the gamers and their emotion around how they felt when they got to play with their parents. Let's hear again from the gamers on this. Hey, I wish my parents had played games with me. That would have been an awesome experience. There are lots of gaming channels on YouTube, for example, that people watch. And I'm certain at least three or four of them have got really popular because it's just like a dad and a, and a son and they just play video games together. And like people really like watching that. And I guess that's because they wish that's something they could have had. One of the ways I bonded with my mom growing up was I would play on my DS and she would watch me play and anything I couldn't finish, any level I couldn't finish, she would finish for me. So that was a way we got to bond together. Plan a game night every week with your kids. It could be super fun for everybody. Okay, so if your child is already getting cyberbullied on gaming, talk to them about blocking the bullies. They can even consider getting a new account and deleting their old one. That way, the bully won't know your new username. There are steps to take before a parent takes away the game entirely. Because if you take away the game, they won't tell you about getting bullied in the future. Let's hear from Preston on this now. I can't help but wonder how a kid could let that get to him when it's really easy to avoid getting cyberbullied. It might just come from lack of emotional intelligence or lack of knowing how to cope, how to what to do. Especially now with Discord being a little too strict on word policy and especially with block buttons, you can create a new account, you can get rid of your old account. Even on video games, if you're playing on Xbox, you can block accounts and they could never ever message you again. If it gets really bad, you still have options to just turn off your Xbox and create a new account. Like it's so easy to avoid. While it may be easy to avoid, it's happening. Kids are getting cyberbullied on gaming. And one of the harshest realities that we heard today is that if your child plays games online, they're going to be told to kill themselves. It's just the reality of today's online gaming world. So if your child is already depressed or suicidal, online gaming is definitely not the space for them. But no matter the mental state of your child, ask them what they're hearing in the games. Let them know that they may hear things like, go kill yourself, and explain that this is not to be taken seriously. If things go too far or they truly feel threatened, they can use the tools that you've introduced to them or simply log off. As with gaming and social media and all the other digital worlds, parents should know what our children's experiences are like so we can guide them and support them as they build out their own identities, both digital and in real life. I truly hope that this episode and these interviews will help make gaming safer for some of you listening. Thank you to John and Preston and Ed and Kyle and Christian and Faye and Brandon to Ra and James and Yannick and Sam, and a few John and Jane Does for letting us into your world. 
a thank you to everybody else for listening to this episode of Scrolling to Death. Hopefully we can get back to when it was all just fun and games. <laughs>